So we're here to talk about Bumblebee and his sales numbers currently. Now, we talked about it before where we were saying how, well, the movie is doing really well on Rotten Tomato and every fan is singing its praises, how sales are down. Well, now we're, we're more uh, than like a week out from its official uh, screening day. And we have it debuting in a lot of foreign countries. And the good news, at least, at least the good news is as of this recording, Bumblebee in its worldwide sales, meaning sales domestically and sales foreign wise, have finally cracked the production budget. Mm. Woo! Thank God. You know, like I was because if you looked just at domestic sales, yeah. it's still a long way to go. But luckily, when you factor in foreign sales, um, and it's mostly thanks to currently right now, Australia, New Zealand, and Russia, mm. um, it helps out a lot. Just those three countries alone, when you factor those guys in, added another like almost 10 million in sales. So that helped a lot. Now, keep in mind, as of this recording, uh, it hasn't come out in China yet, which yeah. is one of the big players. So it should be interesting to see what happens then. But still, as it stands, this is the slowest growth of uh, ticket sales for a Transformer movie since the Transformer live action movie started in 2007. True. And it's really, it's, and I'm telling you, man, it is super concerning. Mm -hmm. It is super concerning. Um, I mean, yes, the movie is enjoyable. Yes, it's what we've been waiting for for a while. But at the end of the day, that's not what investors see. That's not what movie studios see. Yeah. And and you could apply, you know, your own kind of logic to it and go, well, they'll know that it was December and what they were going up against. They knew, like, the, and they'll know that that's the reason. Sometimes nope. they they <laughs> won't look at that. They're just gonna go like, well, Bumblebee's, you know, Transformers is dead. Da da da. You know. So right now the numbers are. They're kind of shaky. Uh, Aquaman is, and and the thing is, is that the argument is, is like Aquaman is still kicking butt, like you mentioned before off the air with Mary Poppins. Mm -hmm. You know. Oh um, yeah. So I was basically saying that. Uh, uh, so right now, I think uh, in the standings, it is Aquaman is just killing it. Mary Poppins is slowly chugging in there and making back its thing. It's doing very well, and sadly, because Mary Poppins is doing better, Bumblebee's the one that suffers basically. Yeah. And it's and it's been quite a dip. It's been quite quite. I mean, a dip. it's technically in third, right? Yes, Bumblebee still, is. It, Bumblebee it's still right in third, now but it's like a distant third. It's I guess. a dis it's a distant third, and it also it's also combines with another comment that I wanted to bring up too, which was um, the discussion of an animated movie in the future if they wanted to do an all Cybertron animated movie. And it's like, uh, you know, we, we had that discussion. Well, let's see how Spider-Man in the, in the, Into the Spider-Verse does, right? Mm -hmm. And that might also give us an indication. And the sad thing is, is also Spider-Man in the Spider-Verse really is having a weird time, too, in terms of, uh, in terms of money. I mean, it's... Like, it's I mean, it, it did... Um, it's made its money back. It's made its money back. I think it's over right now. It's almost like 11 million over its... Hold on a sec. Where's the budget? Yeah, it's, it's like a, 11... 90, it's oh, about no, eleven minutes. Oh, it's sorry, about it's way more than that. My bad. Yeah, it's it's oh, it's it's made its money back and then some, but yeah. it was a, considerably less than what they were hoping for. Like their their projection was a lot more. And the thing is, is that though I will I it's will a, say this: uh, it's a hundred and twenty three million over its uh, its budget. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, ninety million budget. So that's not which too is bad. which is good. But it's just the projection was a lot more. And the, but the thing is, at least with Into the Spider Verse, it didn't have the crazy marketing campaign that Bumblebee. Yeah, had. and, and, and it's Spider Man too. You know, Spy like you would think they would really push. Like I think more of the money went into Venom. I think if were, anything, I think, I think they were just more confident because of how well Marvel movies do to begin with. And yeah, you could ju you don't you could just kind of like oh well, we don't really have to market it. Everyone knows who Spider Man is, and um, you, you know. Yeah, I could see them just kind of like, eh, we don't really there was, have to market there it There was super hard. so much media campaign pushing for Bumblebee. There was so much like, you know, just uh, small segments that were shot and, and special videos and YouTube segments. And now like the movie's been out for a week and it's like they're still putting that stuff out there. Yeah. They're still going like, be sure to check out the movie. You know, I went into, uh, I went to downtown Montreal. It was if anyone go go on my uh, on my Instagram, uh, I was 
in downtown Montreal and there was this glowing bumblebee poster with the mm. eyes glowing and everything like a nice like you know banner thing they're really trying to push this mm. you know and I know in is, some places they have that big diorama of bee just kind of chilling out and you could pose next to him and stuff well that's just it like they they're they're really trying to push this heavily hoping that this is going to find some kind of success. I, I think, like, and I know it's a silly thing, but I think one of their biggest weaknesses was this movie is just called Bumblebee, the movie, and, and there's no Transformers in the title at all. And I, I, don't, I, I, I don't know if it, they did that because they were worried that people were already burnt out on Transformers. And we just, when um, the last night was this year or was it last year? It was last year. It was last year. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I think, that, like, they're just worried that people might have been burned out. I don't know. I don't I know think, if that might have been the case or not. I, I think. I think personally, I think that what happened was they were just going to call it Bumblebee the movie, and then af- when everything was said and done, I think they, it dawned on them like, oh man, we got to really remind people what this is, and that's where the huge marketing push came from, where they're just like, hey, just to let you know, this is a Transformer movie. You know, here's here's a preview. Here's this. Here's that. Like. I would love to, like, I get a feeling we're going to find out about this. Like, this is one of those things, like, five, ten years from now, mm. wh- when it's so separated from the movie's release, that certain people are going to come forward and be like, this is how it really went down. You know what I mean? Like, behind the scenes, like, from a, uh, a writing room floor perspective. Right. And we're going to find out, like, how much of a mess it probably was. And then also, it, the movie kind of takes place during the 80s, and I kind of feel like, I thought the 80s, the new, like, the the nostalgic 80s wave has kind of died down and now it's the 90s right 90s now. The is 90s the new is 80s. kind of the is the is the in thing right now and this movie sent so I don't know. I don't I know could, what I could 100% attest to that running running video game conventions like the top selling product right now is N64 and GameCube. So, hell, we hell we can even just relate that to toys. The what's the new thing coming in right now? Beast Wars. Beast Wars, Superhuman Beast Wars. Samurai Cyber Squad gets a remake. You know, <laughs> you know Beast Wars, Super uh, um, Armada slowly starting to make it onto the scene in the third party. Hasbro, a bit. Hasbro willing to buy Power Rangers as a product. Says exactly. A lot about- so, you know, like I mean, that's that's the trend that's going to be happening in the next few years. So, I don't, you know, it could it's, be a lot of factors. It could be it, some factors. I don't know. There's there's a lot of things going on, but at the end of the day, how it affects us is that what's happening is the Bumblebee movie isn't doing that well as they had hoped. Yeah. And I mean, there was like I said, they're like, if the Bumblebee movie's successful, we'll expect an Optimus Prime movie. Now it's like, well, I well we don't have any confirmed stuff right now, but I know before this, I think on the twenty third of December, there was an article. Saying that, oh yeah, we're 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 thinking of doing, or we're probably going to do an animated like set in Cybertron movie, um, but we haven't heard anything like, hey, we're kind of, re- re- you know, we haven't heard that, uh, we haven't read that um, Hasbro to the investors call, investors, yeah, you know what I mean, like, and they'll plot out like, oh well, since this movie didn't do so well, we're going to rethink this, and da 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 da. And also the fact that I think in that same article they had said we were thinking about how to do a, a Optimus Prime movie and we find it a little bit difficult because, you know, Optimus Prime is pretty stoic and he's just kind of, you know, he's always right. So and I should, probably, make- I should probably bring this up too and mm-hmm. make this part of the topic also. But another thing too is we recently found out that Hascon isn't happening. Ah. And- and I was Has- going to ask you about that if you want to talk about it or yeah, add it well as a we'll thing. Br- we'll talk about it right now. And the thing is with okay. Hascon not happening, is I mean it says a lot about what's going on behind the scenes right now with Hasbro, and it's kind of coincidental that like Bumblebee movie isn't doing as hot as they had hoped. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of weird stuff going on. You know, ha- um, Star Wars franchise isn't as, you know floating as strong as it could be. Um, you know, there's just it's it's in a weird place right now, and with mm-hmm. Hascon now on top of that not happening, it's making us go like, oh man, like we're not going to get some straight answers for quite a bit. You know, it's it like it's we're gonna it's like we're gonna have some Transformer conventions, and then after TFCon you uh Toronto, it's gonna be quiet for a while until yeah. San Diego rolls around, where we might get some kind of official word on stuff. Which is a shame because Siege looks good, and I mean, from mm-hmm. a toy line perspective, and we have the IDW books that are going to be rebooting and everything. 
but it's it's really weird what's going on right now and it's not it's not like it's oh it's a grim future but it's like it's in a weird place right now and i'm really curious to see what's going to go on because it it affects all of us as yeah. as lifelong fans of the brand who are going to keep marching forward with it you know i always say like i you know i've always been with transformers since the beginning i became like a hardcore hardcore fan when i pretty much got the internet in 96 with beast wars but like I've always been a hardcore fan of the brand, never, never like gave up. And you know, again, that's the whole point why you have side hobbies. If it ever gets kind of stale, you could always go play your Mega Man. You could always <laughs> go like you know go go build some Gundam model kits or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. you know, you could always come back to it. And it's just right now as a hardcore you know lifelong fan of the brand, it's us going like, man, what what's what's going to be the next thing now? Because it's really weird. I mean, personally, me. Um, I think it's it should kind of get what maybe Star Wars will be doing, which is uh, take a break on the movies. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, go go away for like t- three years, you know, let the batteries charge, you know, and uh, and come back stronger than ever. Let yeah. uh, let the Bumblebee movie teach you what worked uh, story wise, visual wise, design wise. Let the sales of the Bumblebee toys against, say, Studio Series tell you what's important uh, monetary-wise from a design standpoint, toy-wise. Um, I mean, if the Bumblebee movie toys sold well, it says that there still is a market for the youth market of, of simplistic toys. If it didn't sell so much well, but the, but the Studio Series stuff was still doing well, then you know where to put your money there. Yeah, You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, at yeah. the end. It, there's a lot like you could take this time that three years to really educate yourself and learn from it and i mean it's it's the same way like when they jumped into 2007 with the michael bay movie you know it's not like they just decided to do everything like that that came from from a couple of years of planning and processing and they didn't know if it was going to succeed or not but they sure as hell thought about it yeah exactly so, so it's when when we jumped into 2007 with that kind of engineering, with that kind of aesthetic, with that kind of look, that was them going, well, here's what we had before, Unicron Trilogy, and we mm-hmm. don't want to do that right now. <laughs> we, we Like Unicron Trilogy, look, I love Galaxy Force, Cybertron's toys, you know, and, and some of the Energon ones, but they were like, look, we're doing Japanese designs with Japanese engineering, with Japanese aesthetic, and this is X amount of money it's making for us right now. So... Let's do let's let's go in the opposite direction, do this American Mecca and this Michael Bay, you know, design look and everything. And let's see how that does for us. And well, it made them tons of money for a good like, you know, three, four years before Dark of the Moon. Yeah. So it's understandable why they trucked along in that direction. Of course, you have to understand classics really wasn't a thing yet. It started in 2006. So everything changes. Look, now the mainline stuff, you know, back in the day, mainline was transformers armada transformers uh energon transformers cybertron transformers mm-hmm. animated transformers prime it was always the tv series was the main line and the sub lines were alternators uh titaniums classics like universe 2.0 it, mm-hmm. it was always those were the sub lines now today the main lines are the classics now yeah, the main lines much. are war for cybertron siege and the sidelines are Cybertron, Bumble, excuse me, uh, Cyberverse, Bumblebee. So they've seen how things have reversed. So it's something that take a breather, Hasbro, take a step back, see what's selling, see what works, see what's what's happening, and then come back and then attack it from that angle. Maybe take two years off. Don't you don't have to take three, but take two years <laughs> off and really, really reestablish what's going on because right now Star Wars is go- is 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 hurting, mm-hmm. is hurting because of that. And you don't want that to happen to a brand you own. You own Star Wars, but you don't own own Star Wars. So, yeah, exactly. You know, but you, the last thing you need is something you guys legitimately own uh, to be hurt that bad. So that's that's my 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 two feelings about that in a nutshell.